Hey guys, it's Baban and I've just finished doing a cell shaded thing so I'm going to go over how I do cell shading and some little things you can do with it that maybe you might not have thought that you could do with it. Uh, anyway, yeah, uh, just I'm going to get rid of most of the work that I've done and just leave the sketch and what I'll do is go through all the different layers and how I've used them. Now it'd be a lot easier if I'd actually named all the layers right, but um, it's fine, we'll work with it. So yeah, sketchy sketch. Um, clean it up, obviously do the lines, do the lines, um, flats, any details, uh, optional edge around everything which I explain how to do in another video in Manga Studio, I'll put a link to that at the end um, and the actual cell shading which is what I'm going to talk about so what I tend to do is well this looks like quite different now and you'll be thinking how have you done that but I'll tell you what I do now. Um, what I'll do is get the layer, right let's get rid of that and pretend I haven't got it, I'll get rid of the cell shading layer. What I'll do is I'll go to the layer that's got the flats, I'll copy it, um, let's put it at the top so I know where it is, And then, whichever mode you want to set it to, it's quite useful to use these for um, cell shading. Because if you go and pick every colour and, you know, fill it in separately, it's just going to be a hassle. So, uh, we want to go and pick one of these, and the one that I used was hard light. Now, it looks messy because it's the same colour as the flats. So, what we want to do is there's a little button, not sure if it's on the screen, let me pull it out there's a little button over to the side here with a little lock and a little checkerboard and that is called the transparency lock I think and if you click that, but I'll show you without it first without it, um, everything will go wherever if you click the transparency lock on, it stays within the boundaries of where there is something and where it's transparent, it won't touch. So what we've done by copying the flats layer is get the big chunk, the big shape of everything so that we don't have to try and replicate it again. It's just to keep the shape of it because what we're going to do now is pick a different colour Go for a dark red, make my brush huge, and I can just go and fill everything in really easily. Like that. There we go. And you know, you can change the uh, opacity of it so it's not as strong. Now uh, let's compare that to the finished one. Now you can see on this, this is all on the same layer, the overlay, well hard like overlay thing. Um, you can see the top bit is blue but the bottom bit is red and this is another thing to do with transparency lock and something that you can do. Um, so what I'm going to do, say I want to try and replicate it as the one, as the finished one that I've done. So what I'm going to do is pick the other colour that I want. I want blue at the top and the red at the bottom. So I've already got the red. So I'm going to pick a blue and put this over the top. Uh, 
there we go. So now I've got red at the bottom and blue at the top and now I'm just going to soft, soften this middle bit out a bit doing that and it's useful with this to put little swatches at the top on a different layer or something so you know which colours you're choosing but you can um, just putting it back to normal and changing it and you can always go and do this to see what the gradient looks like a bit easier and you know just mess with it as much as you want. This is something that I use quite a lot because um, when everything's shaded with the cell shading in just one colour it tends to look a bit uh, a bit boring and it, you know, you can have like changes in light, lighting in certain parts, and it looks a bit more interesting and gives it a bit more, a bit more of a range of colours. Okay, so we've got that now, and um, put in these other little bits that I added in. Right, now, what's the next thing? There's some places where it's not, so what I do with those is just go and erase them, but because um, because the transparency locks on, if I, if I go and erase something like this, and then I've still got the blue colour, if I try and draw it, oh, I've turned the transparency lock off. <laughs> Um, yeah, it can be quite a fuss if you want to like go back over it and the transparency locks on, then it won't go uh, back over where you've erased. So you can turn it off and do it, but if you're trying to fill it in, you can go like accidentally over the edge like that, and you want to keep the shape that you've got, which was the point of us copying the flat layer originally and posting that as this. Or to base this off and then just changing the layer mode uh, so what you can do is before you actually chip away at it you can make a copy and paste it just so you've got another layer and then just uh, put it so it's not visible so that when you sort of carve in the shape out like this that it in case you do screw up, instead of having to go and draw all these back in, I'll go and make a whole new layer again and do all the shading and everything and the gradient. You just don't have to deal with that. You can just use the layer that you copied before you started editing it. Okay, and let's just add a little bit of this and I'm going to do it really sloppy so you can, just so you can see the point. And sometimes I do one of these really quick just to figure out where I want all the shading and how I want it to look and if it looks good like quite choppy and then what I'll do is go and use the other layer that I copied to do a cleaned up one it's just to figure out the lighting and shapes if I'm not completely sure of it and don't want to go into it straight straight away Okay, so what's the next thing? Right. You might be able to notice on this. It's not that obvious this step, but uh, you can see around the edges here. There's little bits of like backlight and bounce light. And what I did with them, I didn't go and erase it. What I did, if I turn this to normal actually you'll be able to see it um you can see i've got the main colors the blue and the red and the gradient i've made in between them but i've also got other little colors that are solid here that i've added in just to make a bit of bounce like and this is just again of the idea of instead of having one solid colour as the uh, as the shading, you can add in other colours and add in little lights, bounce lights, 
that are different colours just to make it pop out a bit more. Because shell shade doesn't just have to be entirely one colour. Like I say, especially with the transparency lock, you can have loads of fun messing about with it. Put this back to how it was. <laughs> Rid of it. Okay. Right, now what I did is I just went and picked some colours and, you know, tested them out on it and that's a bit bright. That's a bit better, that's not too bad. And, you know, just paint them on. And you can do this with, like, any any colour. Just get a little bit of different coloured bounce light and it looks nice. It's just easy little things that improve the look of um, cell shaded stuff. And another thing I'll mention that I haven't actually used in this, but I'll show you it on the uh, original layer. What I'll do on some things, this is one's a bit more uh, choppy, but that's intentional. But um, a thing that I'll do to soften everything out is I'll get the blur tool and where the edges are sharp, because I usually do it with a... Uh, really grainy pan, what I'll do is just go along these edges and soften them out a bit, especially where it's really round shapes, it's not too bad in the hair but you know when it's on faces and stuff it can look a bit a bit too harsh to have it really really sharp like in some places like this bit, this is okay, but here where it's one big curve, that could do softening up. And it's just changing a little bit how the light's hitting it, so it's not hitting it. It doesn't look as if it's hitting it directly on one flat plane that's facing straight towards the light, which it'll look like if it is really um, a really jagged, like straight gritty line. But when it's softer, it softens it out a bit and gives it a bit more of a curve. Like on the face, you don't want the face to look dead angly. Especially if it's like the cheeks or something. Uh, yeah, there we go. That's how I do cell shading pretty easily. And uh, actually, one thing more that I'll mention: um, I knew I wanted dark cell shading on this, so to make it look even darker, what I started with, with was really pastely colours, and then I put darker colours over them, and it really increases the contrast because, especially when you um have these dark colours over it, it makes everything darker. And then when you erase it, the contrast of having the pastel colours as the lights, as the highlights are where the light's hitting it, it really makes it pop a lot more with the contrast. Uh, yeah, anyway, that's how I do cell shading. I hope that helped. I'll put links to my stuff in the description. I'll put a few more links up for videos. And, uh, yeah, thanks for watching. Bye.